Now it's nine o'clock. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the house of the Lord for kind of bittersweet. Our last gathering here this year. It's been a good week. Uh, I haven't been able to be here with you as much as I would have liked, but I've enjoyed what time I, I could be here. And I, uh, I appreciate each of yours dedication in uh, coming here this week because it is a dedication when you look up the uh, the definition of, of dedication or to dedicate which is the topic of this morning it means to devote to a particular task or purpose whether time effort or of oneself to devote to a particular task or purpose. You'll hear some scriptures and thoughts this morning along the lines of what it is to dedicate. And we heard an awesome message last night by the power of the Holy Spirit. And it was along those same lines. Are our hearts pricked at this very moment? Ready to move forward? And to do what God asks us. Willing to accept his will in our lives. That's the question. So as we come here to consider what dedication is. And are we willing? Are we at that point that we're ready to do that? That's the question. So a hymn that would be appropriate I'm sure I'm glad Angie's up here because I didn't even tell her the hymns. Uh, we're going we're gonna to stand and we're going to sing hymn 430. Are you witnessing for him? 430. Dear God, thank you for the day. Bless the food 
I know if everyone get your safety and heal the sick. Bless our your church. Bless our family. In Jesus' name, Amen. Now I see why Caleb was afraid to touch the mic. There's a big spider. <laughs> um, some scriptures we have for you is from Matthew uh, chapter 5, verse 15 through 18. Verily, verily, I say unto you, I give unto you to be the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its flavor or savor, wherewith shall the earth Where sh wherewith shall the earth be salted? If the salt therefore be good for nothing, but be to cast out and be trodden under the foot of men. Verily, verily, I say unto you, I give unto you to be the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hid. Behold, do men light a candle and put it under a bushel? Nay, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light to all that are in the house. Therefore, let your light so shine before the world that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. And then Matthew 6, uh, 19. Lay not up for yourself treasures upon the earth where moth and dust do corrupt and where the thieves break through and steal. But lay up yourself treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust nor or doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. And again I say unto you, go you into the world, and care not for the world, for the world will hate you, and will persecute you, and will turn you out for their synagogues. Nevertheless, you should go forth from your house, from house to house, teaching the people, and I will go before you. <clears throat> Therefore, if God so clothe the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast out into the oven, and how much more will he not provide for you if ye are not? Of little faith. Therefore, take no thought in saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? Why is it that ye murmur among yourselves, saying, ye, We cannot cast, or we cannot obey thy words, because ye have not all these things, and seek to excuse yourselves, saying, That after all these things, Things do the Gentiles seek. Behold, I say unto you that your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. Wherefore, seek not the things of this world, but seek ye first to build up the kingdom of God, to establish his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take ye for, therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day shall be the evil thereof. Trade off here. She got my tie. Um, <clears throat> you know, we don't, Council Bus, we really don't do family devotions like this, so it's uh, a little different for us, and we appreciate the opportunity. And uh, I failed to enter, even introduce my family, uh, at least for the recording. Uh, so the McCormicks, Mark, Nikki, Caleb, the five-year-old over here, Hannah, the newborn, that's uh, very vocal at times. Um, so hopefully she's, uh, she'll be one to uh, be vocal and sharing about Jesus in years to come. 
Uh, wanted to just share a couple thoughts with you to center your minds upon the thoughts of dedication. Uh, there was four scriptures there. I hope you took the time to, to write those down. If you've been a Christian for a short amount of time, you've probably heard all four of those out of Matthew. And yet, I don't know if we process it, digest it the way we need to, and apply it into our lives. Uh, we need to be that light into the world. There are people out there that are hungering and thirsting for truth and righteousness. But I don't even think they quite realize what they're hungry for. And you, each of us, we have the opportunity to be that light to those around us. You know, you come into contact with people all the time. You go to the grocery store, almost everybody does at some point. You might grudgingly do it, but you go. You have an opportunity there. Wherever we live, you're going to have somebody nearby. You have an opportunity. You have an opportunity to be a blessing to others. And the other ones, the treasures, the uh, seeking first the kingdom of God, which is getting very vocal. Uh, we all have treasures in life. A treasure is something that we hold dear. You know, if 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 I if I had this block of gold here, maybe worth a lot of dollars, but to Hannah it's not going to mean much, right? It's what do we value things? That's what is a treasure. And if we seek things of the physical sense, it's not going to last. Moth will corrupt. It's going to get, you know, return to dust. We're not going to have that forever. But if we hold a heavenly treasure, that's a different story. We will have that treasure for eternity. The Doctrine and Covenants tells us to consider the solemnities of eternity. That's a lot of big words. But I would invite you to look that up. I'm not going to tell you where it is, frankly, because I don't know which section it is. But it's an important phrase. The solemnities of eternity. That is something that we should be dedicating our hearts and our minds to in preparing to enter into celestial glory. That is where, when you read in the book of 2 Nephi, chapter 13, uh, Kiyoki referenced this. Actually, he might have read part of this. But in 2 Nephi, chapter 13, uh, verses, uh, let's see here, 20... 6 through 31. Most of us here, we've been baptized, we've been confirmed with the power of the Holy Spirit, or had the Holy Ghost uh, bestowed upon us. Referring back to Wayne's message there, which I really appreciated that. For the, uh, and ye have received the Holy Ghost, verse 26, which witnesses of the Father and the Son unto the fulfilling of the promise which he hath made, that if ye enter in by the way, ye should receive. But now, my beloved brethren, after you've gotten in this straight, in this narrow path, I'd ask if all is done. If I hold, I'd say unto you, nay. For ye have not come thus far, save it were by the word of Christ, with unshaken faith in him, relying wholly upon the merits of him, who is mighty to save. Wherefore you must press forward, in other words, dedicate, with a steadfastness in Christ, having a perfect brightness of hope, and a love of God and of all men. Wherefore, if ye shall dedicate, it says press forward, if ye shall dedicate, feasting upon the words of Christ, word of Christ, and endure to the end, 
Behold, thus saith the Father, ye shall have eternal life. In other words, you're considering the solemnities of eternity. Now behold, my beloved brother, brethren, and brothers and sisters, this is the way. There is none other way. Nor name given under heaven, which whereby man can be saved in the kingdom of God. So what is our treasure? Are we ready to dedicate? Have our hearts been softened to where we're, we're ready for God to mold us and to make us into more perfect uh, creation that he's created us to be? Because we're going to go out from here in just a few short moments. We're going to go back into the world. Are we changed? Are we different than how we came here to, uh, at the beginning? You know, I, uh, I can't even remember who said this. I think it might have been Brother Rick. I can't remember. Uh, said that January 1st was not the new year. It was the week of reunion. It was the beginning of the new year. Was that Rick? Does that sound right? I can't remember. I, I think it might have been. Either way, whoever said it, it's quite appropriate to dedicate. This is new. We're ready to start fresh, to move forward, to press forward, and endure until the end, whatever that is. Um, and, you know, I was thinking also about reunion. I know I'm already looking forward to next year. I'm really looking forward to not having to work, hopefully, and be able to take the time off and be here the whole week, because I really feel like I missed out some. But, you know, I, 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 I've heard it say, and maybe you guys feel this way, too, that this is, the, this is like a, a, a spiritual mountaintop experience for us. And hopefully it is. Hopefully it has been for you. I hope that at some point this week, the, the Spirit of God has, has touched your heart. But the question then becomes, what are we going to do with that? And you know, uh, it, in having this, this mountaintop experience here at Reunion this week, we've, we've dedicated, we've set aside a week, or as much as we could a week, to draw apart from the world and to come here and to hear His Word preached, to come together to pray for each other, come here to share and encourage and, and strengthen one another's faith. Don't we do that every Sunday when we gather together? Why cannot our Sunday experience be the same as, as we, we consider reunion is? It should be. I think part of that is our preparation, in other words, our dedication in coming here. If we carry that same dedication to each of our gatherings, whether it's Sunday worship, whether it's Wednesday night prayer and testimony service, or even maybe even further, spending a few moments with your family or yourself, just you and the Lord at home, opening up the books, praying, singing hymns, all those things. Trying to give you some different things to consider on dedication that you might draw closer to us so that as we leave here today, we're at, say, this spiritual level. And we want to get up here, right? beginning of the week, we were down here. The natural course of things, natural man is an enemy God, I think we've heard that a couple times, is we leave here, and and I guess tomorrow's church, so it might be okay tomorrow, but come Monday, all of a sudden we start going back. Saints, why don't we do something different? Be different. And we're here at this level, and let's Go to the dedication of each of our gatherings so that when we come back next year or whenever we have opportunity like this to gather again, that we're at least at this level, if not even more. Because if we started the next gathering at that level, what could the Lord do with us? 
I'm reminded of Gideon's army. You know how got we uh, narrowed down to 300, and yet God was able to accomplish much through few, through small, through weak. Saints, let's be part of that 300. Let's be part of that Gideon's army. The Lord can use us in magnificent ways. I knew I'd talk long. <laughs> I've got one more thing for you to consider on dedication. And then we're going to have Caleb. Where Where are you, Caleb? Are you still around? I was going to have you announce a song. Yeah, um, I'll be in the back there. Come on up here, Caleb. Whoa. You know, these water bottles are great, but they make noise when they fall. <laughs> Section 140. Paragraph 5. This is one of the last revelations that was given before we entered into this uh, dark and cloudy night. The church is admonished, again, that all movements towards Zion and the gathering and the temporalities connected therewith are within my law. And all things should be done in order. In other words, he's calling the church, meaning you and I, to, to dedicate, to rededicate. The advice and counsel uh, of the elders and the bishop in his counsel is sought and honored when received as before enjoined, though necessity their counsel was given as not intended to dictate or to deny any man his agency. And here, the work of preparation and the perfection of his saints go forward slowly. The Zionic conditions, remember that level, are no further away nor any closer than the spiritual condition of my people justifies. But I really appreciate this. Even if we're not ready to step up to the plate, hopefully we are says, but my word shall not fail, neither will my promises, for the foundation of the Lord stand assured. His kingdom's coming, with or without you and I. The question is, do we want to dedicate ourselves to be a part of it? Do we want to be found to be the more righteous? That's the question. So I really hope in our dedication service that I get to hear a few of how you are ready to go and you are ready to uh, press forward, to dedicate, and to endure to the end. I'm really, that will strengthen my faith. So I, I'm looking forward to that. Caleb, last chance. You want to try it? Nope. Okay. This last hymn we're going to sing, and then I'll offer a very, very short prayer, is uh, hymn 323, and, and I just wanted to say, you know, I talk about being the homes. I know I have an advantage being a piano player, uh, but anybody can open up the hymn the book at home. Uh, you know, we have a, a video um, that we recorded where I was playing this, and we were singing as a family this song. And uh, Caleb here, he's about mm, a year and a half. Is he two? year and a half, somewhere in there? And he's going around with the hymnal, and he's making sure everybody's got a hymnal because this is what we're supposed to do. And we're singing this song, and, he, and he's singing it too, two years old. And uh, he's making sure we're singing, and, and he has a wonderful job singing the amen at the end. So uh, this is a, a hymn of dedication, Take My Life. And let it be, uh, 323. Why don't we uh, go ahead and stand again? It's, we sing better when we stand.
eternal love and heavenly Father, we do come uh, together for our final gathering here. And I just pray, Lord, that uh, you would touch our hearts, continue to touch our hearts and, and soften us, that we might uh, be able to welcome your Holy Spirit, a greater portion of it, into, into our, uh, our, our hearts and our minds. Lord, we need you in our lives, Lord. Help us in our dedications this morning, whether spoken or whether in silent, that we might be able to fulfill them, that we might be able to do your will in our lives. Bless us, Father. Bless each one that has responsibility yet uh, to break the bread of life to us in the various ways that, that is able to be done. Guide us and direct us, Lord. Help us, Lord, to indeed endure to the end, that we might uh, rest, serve, work in your kingdom, the kingdom of God. For truly, this is the way. We ask all these things in the name of your Son, even Jesus, the living Christ's name. Amen.